Hey guys and welcome to the next tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be taking a look at the isometric tile map that we created in the last episode and what we can do with it to make it really interactive. Uh, let's get started. We're going to start this episode with this tile set that we created in the last episode. If you haven't seen that one yet, I'll put a link up there. Now, before we really get started into making this world interactive, I first want to share with you the problem that we'll be facing if we try to do that through the tile map system. Now, I want to emphasize what I'm going to say to you now is specifically for isometric tiles. For forward angled tiles or top down tiles, you don't have this problem. This is specific for isometric. So please keep that in mind when you watch this video and when you apply these lessons to your own game world. Now, when I got the map selected, and I'll add a player to it. I made this player before I started this tutorial. We'll get back into this player specifically a little bit later. What we want is that when the player were to walk behind these bookcases that the player disappears. Now the tile map system in Goat is very powerful and it gives you the option to do that. If you would drag this player to library and under library the tile map you have this option Y sort and if that is true the tile maps children so in this case the player will be drawn in order of their Y coordinates. So with that selected I could move this player now and I can move him behind the bookcases. So that's all looks good. Now is it really good? No, no it actually isn't because if the player would to approach is a little bit lower you can see that it is now popping in and out between closets. And that is because of the Y coordinate of the actual tile. Now we can change this too. We can change the tile origin. I've already put it to center instead of top left. We can put it to bottom left. And then we could take this player and have a look at how this works. And now this works fine. But now I've broken this bookcase or this sword case, I should say, because this is a other angle tile and it's a little bit elongated. So there's some issues there because of the diamond shape of the isometric tile. So we need a different solution than we can get through the tile map system. We need to be adding them as props. And that's what we're doing next. And that's where this tutorial really starts. Do you want to learn how to design and make games? Or maybe you just want to learn more about Godot? Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. Also, if you're curious about the game development that I do myself, I'm live streaming my own game development sessions every Tuesday and Thursday on Twitch. The link, the schedule, the description, the details, everything down in that description box below. Now let's continue. Now the node that we're going to need for our solution is a Y sort node. This pretty much does exactly the same as the Y sort that we were just testing out on the, uh, on the tile map. Only this one doesn't take only a tile map. This one takes every sort of 2D node. Kinematic body, rigid body, static body, 2D position, node 2D, you name it. If it's a 2D node, you put it in the Y sort, it's going to be sorted. You could pretty much guarantee. I've already made another one. That's for a whole demo setup I've made a little bit to the uh, southeast of this tile map. Uh, stick around, I'll show you that one too. So under the test, I'm going to be making a new child. I'll be making a static body. We're going to be recreating this display case with sword, but then through a prop instead of a tile system. So I'm going to rename it. This is going to be the display case with sword orientated east. And I'm immediately going to save this branch as because I just don't want to add one prop. I want to be able this to be reusable so I can use it again and again and again, just like I can use a tile set. So I'll be saving it in my scenes props library. I've already made another couple of props and another, another couple of scenes for that demo, which we'll get into in a moment. So we have it saved as a scene and now we can open that scene. So we've got pretty much an empty static body here. So we need to add some information to this. We need to add a sprite node and it will also require us to have a coalition shape. And we're going to go for the polygon because we're working with isometric art. So we don't really got any use for rectangles and stuff like that. So for the sprite, I'm going to go into the assets of the tile set that we have been using in the last episode. So we're basically using exactly the same images that Kenny provides in his tile set uh, assets. So we're going to take that display case sort east and we will be dragging it to the texture right here. Now I need to get back to my zero zero. So here we are right now. Right. Why sort? How does it work? That's going to be up next. 
So why sort? How does it work? How is this going to help us? Well, last time when we were working on the tile set, we were ordering all our different props and walls through uh, basically uh, ordering the different nodes within the node tree. The why sort, it doesn't really matter how it's ordered or how it's sorted. All it cares about is the Y coordinate of that specific node. So to make sure that this all is going to work together, we need to make sure that we got a fixed reference point from which we can work off. And Godot pretty much gives that at our zero zero coordinate between the X and the Y axis. So what we'll be doing or what is actually happening with this case, if the player is walking around this case, you want the player when it's drawn in front of this or walking in front of this case, we want it to be drawn in front. And when it's walking behind this case, we want it to be walking behind. Now, if we take a look at the player here, this player is also, by the way, provided in the assets of the dungeon uh, tile set or the dungeon tile set assets from Kenny. So you can also find a, a, a character in there. So if you want to use this one, you can just get it from the same place that I uh, showed you in the uh, previous tutorials and tile maps. So I've drawn my character, or I've actually uh, dragged the sprite of this character 190 um, pixels upward, so that will put it into the negative in, uh, in Godot, as positive Y is down. And I've dragged it in such a way that the heels of the characters are exactly on the um, zero, zero point, on the X zero. This way, it will be in a fixed reference point. So what we need to be doing with our display case is we're going to be dragging this sprite up and we can say, OK, as long as the feet of the player are going to be standing in front of this case, the Y of that player is going to be higher than the Y of this bookcase because it will not be able if we if we add a collision shape to this and it won't be able to enter through the case anymore is never it's why his feet are always going to be below this x reference point that we had for the player so the, the feet will always be below that, that that chest or the display case now we also of course have to make sure that the player can move around it on this side because we've got a little bit of space here or we can't put it like this like how now we would make sure that the player can't get behind there but now the player if the feet will be standing on this side of the image it will be drawn behind the cake well that's not what we want so a, a, a reference point or, or, or good practice or a good guideline I guess is if you have a rectangular shaped isometric piece of art always put the corner which is sort of in the distance so the furthest away corner which will be this corner for this display case always put that about equal with the x line now we're going to be going back and forth to this closet a couple of times but now with just this saved we only need to put a polygon uh, a polygon in here so let's quickly draw something out we'll change that a little bit later save that again now if we go back to this map and this display case is now somewhere in the corner because it will be spawned in at zero zero. We're just going to delete it. Don't need it right now because we got our scenes now and in our scenes, our props, our library, we now got that display sword west uh, or with sword. And now you can just drag it in. You can just put it in the world, however many you want. Doesn't matter. It works just like a towel set. Just add more and more and more and more. Now, if we take this player and we're going to be dragging this one around, you can see now it's drawn behind this case. And now, oh, well, now, of course, it's not in front yet. We need to put this player inside this test Y sort as well. And all these guys need to be in this test Y sort as well. So now they're all in the Y sort. And the Y sort is going to be figuring out, OK, how should I draw this? And as you can see, the player is now, oh, need a player. No, we need a player. This player is behind here. You can see here it pops out that we need to fix that. But it's now drawn behind this. And if you were to put two bookcases close to each other, you can see that it will be drawn in front of one and behind the other. And that's exactly the sort of 3D faking that you want to be doing when you're making a 2D game. Now, how can we make sure that, that the player doesn't accidentally hit that one spot there that we missed out, that we have identified as a problem as we're working with a rectangular shape, another square shape? So we're going to go back into this display and we're going to be working with the collision shape. So we've already got a collision shape and we'll be adding this. Like normally, in a perfect world, you would make the collision shape equal to where the case hits the floor. You don't want to drag it out all the way because then it won't be able to walk behind it anymore. So you want to sort of have the footprint of that specific piece of ad or, or assets 
and you you can make it a little bit you know, it's better to be safe than sorry so right now the player has a collision shape as well and as you can see i put a little bit of margin around the player because we don't want these hands or these arms to glitch into walls or something like that so i made sure that the collision shape of the player is a little bit wider than what it would normally need now that will make sure that when the player comes down here its collision shape will hit this collision shape before it would be able to move below this x line thereby drawing it in front of the case however we got a little bit too much space here this is too much for the uh this 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 is too much space for the collision shape to be enough buffer and the heels will get below this point and the player will be drawn in front and that's the sort of glitch or the sort of artifact that we saw just a moment ago now what you very often see in 2d isometric games diablo 2 being a perfect example is that you can't approach objects from the back as much as you would have expected it to be able and that's because they put a little bit of extra collision shape there so basically what they do is they make the coalition ship a little bit like this. Now, you wouldn't necessarily maybe have to drag out this last point, but if you don't drag out this last point, you're sort of not gonna be walking parallel with the closet if you would be hugging it. And that would create a really weird feeling. So it's better to just drag out both points a little bit, thereby the player doesn't really get this strange feeling. So now with this extra little bit of space here, the margin of the player is enough to make sure that we don't hit a weird artifact walking on this side of the closet. So with that said, we can save this. Now all these um, the closets, as you can see, all have updated their shape. So as soon as you make one update in this single scene, as they're all instance, they'll all update automatically, all of them. And that makes it really easy to do something with, for example, all your bookcases, all your sword displays, everything you, you do, you can do through that one scene. Now, if we play this, this player also has a camera 2D. This camera 2D is also set to current in the, in the inspector. So when we play this, we should be able to move around with this, uh, with this player. Yes, we can. So now when we walk up here, you can see we got a move and slide function and a move and collide. So we're sliding past this bookcase and we can move around it. And as you can see, I can't approach this closet from the back enough to glitch in front of the closet. I can only get there right there. So this margin that we've created on the feet of the player are enough. And as you can see, I can't approach the, uh, the, the, the display as much from the back as you would maybe naturally feel like it's possible. But in action RPG, you don't really notice it because you're way too busy fighting enemies and all that kind of stuff. I and mean, this feels close enough to feel natural. As you can see, we're missing a little bit there. And this of course works for all of these closets at the same time. Now with that done, you know how to make a prop. And you can do exactly the same with these barrels, you can do exactly the same with these walls, with these closets, and that's what I've been working on, and that's what that, um, that demonstration wire sort is for. So let's switch to that one and have a look at how you can use this to actually build some levels. And I'll have some tips for you on how you can actually make sure that you snap those walls together super neatly so you can get exactly the same effect as you do in the tile map system. Let's get started on that. Now let's move away from this old tile set and go to the demonstration that I was talking about. I've already removed the Y sort that we renamed to test as we no longer need it. Right here we got a little bit of a demo and as you can see from all the collision shapes, these are all props. The only tiles that are still in this section are the floor tiles and I don't see any reason why not to use them. For the floor it works perfectly fine in isometric art. As long as you don't need to white sort those floor tiles, you're good. You can also add coalition shape to the floor tiles. For example, if you want to have any sort of rivers or lakes or for example in an outside environment, um, that works perfectly fine as well. Also together with all these props and I'll probably give a demonstration of that maybe in another video maybe already the next one so right here we got a little bit of a demo now let's go over a couple of these assets and I'll give you some tips on how you can use it first off let's have a look at the wise sword itself the wise sword has children and it has other wise swords as children now this has a little bit of a special functionality because if a wise sword knows is a child of another wise sword, then this wise sword sort of becomes non-functional and only becomes a container to pass on its children to the, the wise sword that it is a child of. 
So this wise sword will collect the children of all these other wise swords, put them in one big bucket, and then it will draw them out based on their Y coordinate. That's very important because with these Y swords basically becoming non-functional other than passing on their children to the next Y sword, now become sort of container Y swords, which you can use to sort of organize your project, putting the walls inside the wall Y sword, putting the props inside the props Y sword, putting the player in the player uh, Y sword, and of course, making the project ready for enemies and projectiles putting your enemies, your kinematic body enemies and your rigid body projectiles in these specific Y swords will pass them on to the main Y sword which is going to sort all of them on the map based on their Y coordinate. Thereby not only the player can walk around the different closets but also your enemies, your bullets, your fireballs, your projectiles, your arrows, your whatever will be drawn in order and everything can walk and fly in front and behind all the different props you have put in your game making it very powerful in its organization methods. Now, with that Y sword out of the way, let's look at some of the scenes, how I've set them up and what you can learn from that. Now, looking at some of the scenes, let's start with the easy one, with these bookcases here. These bookcases are pretty much like the display case sword we made earlier, only the display case sword was a lot more elongated. Thereby, it created a lot more space between its corner and the Y0 line. That's not the case with this bookcase. This space right here is a lot smaller. Small enough for the margin of the player to be enough to make sure we don't get any weird glitches. So that's why I've used the true footprint of this book closet, or this, yeah, this book closet, um, to, make, to, to get the collision shapes that we want. Now for the walls, the walls all have the extra spacing requirement as we saw with the sword display, the display case. So I've not only taken the footprint, but I've put that out a little bit further. And again, I've put the corner of the wall in the furthest uh, or the furthest corner on the Y0 X axis. Now, another important thing is that when you're working with these sprites for the walls, make sure you always reset your X to zero. So we didn't have do that one for this uh, this wall yet, and in my case, I have. I'm using Y uh, increments of 10. As you can see, the corner is not exactly on the Y zero. And that's very important to not always do because we're gonna be making use of grid snapping. And that grid snapping will only work if the walls are gonna be lining up nicely. So I'm using increments of 10 for the Y. You can use any kind of increment for you. It's also dependent on how big the asset is. These assets are kind of big. Can you give them a lot of uh, pixels but maybe if you work with pixel art which is 32 by 32 you might want to bring that that increment down to maybe even four or eight pixels now when we have a look at the wall corner this is pretty much the same though we want the player to be drawn in front of the wall if it stands inside the corner so the heels of the player have to be lower than the uh, corner so we put the inside corner exactly on that y0 x axis line and we've given again a little bit of extra space on both sides to make sure that the player doesn't glitch through the wall now with all of that set up and let's save this wall as we have already put it we can now see this map and let's give this a little bit of a play let's give it a whirl let's see how this all behaves so now we can move behind these book closets even when they're standing a little bit apart from each other this all works fine of course the bookcase we had already tested previously and in the wall i'm hugging the wall right now and as you can see i'm glitching nowhere through this wall and actually giving it a little bit of extra space that actually worked making sure that we keep our head above um, the wall thereby the player can always see itself so it's good to have some visual feedback there also with these barrels we make sure that if we stand in the corner here our feet is just behind the barrel and that sort of that specific nitty-gritty detail to make sure that everything draws fine that's very difficult to set up within the tile map editor and it's much easier to do in one of these props so with that said, let's have a look at how we can actually use this to quite quickly build up a level instead of, you know, dragging and nitty-gritty detailing everything. So if you wouldn't nitty-gritty detail everything, and what I mean by that is if I were to drag one of these walls out and I first have to select the wall Y sort to make sure it goes into the right container, you would have to really drag these very closely, make sure these all line up nicely, and then, you know, you have to 
you have to let it drop at some point and you can get it right but it goes so slow what's actually much faster is if we use the grid snapping up in the toolbar here you got this grid snap icon and when I press that and I press this free um, uh, what is it circles bullets whatever you can configure the snap and I set this grid step to 10 pixels as I said I'm using with a 10 pixel increment in the UI coordinate of all these different walls to make sure that they keep lining up nicely so now that I've set them up with 10 now I cannot find detail the placement of this wall now I'm snapping it to a 10 by 10 pixel grid but I can very easily find the overlap with the other wall so with that I could select this wall I could drag them in straight away one by one that takes a little bit of time like now for example I missed it now you got to be careful because when you miss it and you select it and you reposition it to the right way now you got this wall selected if you would now add the next one you now make a child of that wall that's not what you want you want them all to be child of this white container so to work a little bit faster you could also just add a couple of these in at the same time so okay I'm not, I need another wall that's maybe four long and then once you got them all in you can drag them into the right snapping position as you can see that goes reasonably fast but it can go even faster you know let's let's make this wall a little bit longer to demonstrate that you can also select it and control d duplicate it and then you can just drag it out no nope. drag it out drag it out and because you're duplicating within that y sort container you're just adding more and more and more of these to that specific container so they'll all be in the right Y sort so that's a way how you can use grid snapping now I also said we're going to be making some more interaction within this game I'm not going to be doing that within this tutorial it's going to be too long for that but I do want to show you what the possibilities are so in the next two three minutes I'm going to take some time to give you an idea of what's possible by using all of these as props so the possibilities are actually kind of big and the possibilities are very much related to many problems that people face when they work with tile maps and questions I often see on Reddit and Facebook is for example okay you imagine you got a tile set and you got a tile set with a door now I don't have a prop ready with a door but within the walls we do know that we got a couple of doors here so imagine you had your tile set and you have added your wall to the world and now you're wondering okay how is the player going to interact with that wall because that wall is in a tile set and yes you can put a script on this specific tile set to do the things that we'll be doing right now but it's, it's a much more deeper in the code and you would have to code a lot more you can make much less use of all the parameters of, of a uh, of a, of a static body 2d all those parameters are simply not there because you're working with a tile another static 2d so imagine that one of these walls is uh, actually a door so that's for example this one this will be a door what you could do is you could simply add a child you could say okay i'm going to add an area 2d to this and to this area 2d we'll add a coalition shape and that coalition shape is going to be a circle and we'll drag the circle out a little bit and replace it to the middle of the tile maybe it's a little bit too big maybe a little bit like this and we could say okay as soon as the player we could hook that up in the code as soon as the player enters this area 2d the door should open or maybe a pop-up should appear do you want to go to the next level or maybe uh, the action item e or f or whatever you map that to your keyboard should become a door opening action you know just like you get close to a chest your action um, um, your action button changes functionality based on what's in the proximity or you can detect what's in the proximity through this area 2d and now if you would do that on one of these walls if that was actually the real door if these were all doors they would all have their area 2d now now if you would hook that area 2d up to some code you can actually program all the doors in your games for that specific type of door in one go you don't have to add that to your to the world you don't have to go to the map add a child an area 2d uh, and make that uh, overlap with exactly that door part and you ch decide to put the door somewhere else and then suddenly the area 2d is in the wrong position so with that this actually creates a lot of options now for example another thing that people often ask okay i put some chests or i put some barrels into the game or i put some book closets into the game now i want to make them interactable i want to make them lootable or the player should be able to look through the book closets and see if he can find something or which you also very see in action rpgs is that not all bookcases are actually lootable
notable. Maybe there's a random selection of bookcases based on RNG numbers with a randomizer that's going to determine maybe 20% of all the bookcases in a, in a level when it loads is going to be lootable. That way, every bookcase that was lootable in the last time the player played that level is now going to be different. So that makes the replayability of your map higher because you, in you implement more randomness so the player has more to discover even though he's playing the same map. So with that, for example, you could say, uh, I'm going to go to this book closet, and this book closet, I've added it to a group. You can already see that, I've already done that. So I've added it to the book closets group. Now what you can do now on map, you could say, okay, I'm going to give you a script, and on this script, you may be on it already, and you're going to run some function that's going to say, uh, randomize loot, for example. And you're going to run some randy function on there uh, to make sure you randomize the seat. And then you can say, okay, for a closet in get tree, get notes four, <laughs> get notes in group um, book closets, sit closets. Yeah, I think, I think you write it like that. <laughs> you're gonna do, I don't know, a randy function, and you're gonna be, if you're bigger than 20, then you have to be lootable, and then we're gonna uh, add an area 2D, or then we're gonna maybe uh, change uh, highlight, you know, this is not real code, but in there you can then run the code, and this code will run as soon as the map loads. So as soon as the map is loading, you'll call that function. It's gonna find every bit of these bookcases, because all these bookcases, if you look at the props, because we've placed the main scene in a group, all these bookcases are in a group. So if I just copy these, is in a group, or if I were to select props and add a bookcase, also this one will be in a group now. So all of your bookcases are now in a group. So when you call that function get nodes in three, and you can say, okay, run a function, select a random number between one and a hundred. If the number is higher than 80, then I want to add an area 2D to this bookcase, or I'm gonna activate the area 2D, or when the house mother or house the mouse hover over is over that specific bookcase of this area 2D. I want to create a highlight using a light 2D or a shadow or a different sprite. You know, you can do all kinds of things. You don't have to worry about detailing that inside the map. You can detail that in the props of the scene, the scene props, and they'll be copied over. You can just add them into your world super easy, super fast. So I think I've been rambling on uh, enough now. We've done a couple of things. I've shown you a couple of possibilities, showed you uh, a little bit of like what's maybe possible. It's an alternative way of creating a world and I think it's the only right way to create a world with an isometric map. Again, I'm telling you when you have a forward angled map, you don't need to do this, although you m might still want to do that because of all the functionality these props are gonna give you. So with that said, I think we're done here. That was it for today, guys. I hope you like it. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. Don't forget to check out that Twitch account if you're interested in the game development that I do myself. And stay tuned for the next episode of uh, the tutorials that we're making here on the Game Development Center. I think the next tutorial is going to be that one tutorial I was talking about in the video, making sure we're adding collision shapes to the towel uh, set through the towel set editor, thereby we can use uh, for example, rivers, lakes, uh, making sure that we can't get into the water, we can create cliffs and whatever. I might also make use of a different tile set, maybe through a tile set sheet. That's a little bit of a different approach, and I think it's a good idea to also show you how that works. So let's stay tuned for that episode, and until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you guys.